Hello! In this video, I'm going to show how to do derivation 1009. So, first thing we do always is show the conclusion. After that, we can make an assumption for uh, conditional derivation. Now, if we're following the suggested strategy, then we look up and say, aha, I'm trying to show a conditional. That means I should show the consequent. Uh, because if I do, once I once we complete line 3, we'll be able to say 3CD, which will box and cancel the whole thing because Q is the um, consequent of line 3. So, so we've just said show Q. We'll make an assumption, assume for uh, an indirect assumption because we're not trying to show a conditional. Now we want to look at our premises. We only have one. Let's just put it in, enter it. And we say, aha, so we have uh, number 5 is a conditional. The antecedent is not if p then q. We don't have not if p then q, so we're not going to do modus ponens. But with 4 and 5, we can do modus tollens because 4 is the negation of the consequent of 5, so we can say 4, 5, modus tollens. We have a double negated conditional. Let's get rid of the double negations. And now we can apply modus ponens with 2 and 7 to get q, and we have a direct derivation. Note that we also have an indirect derivations with lines 4 and 8. Either way, we have a derivation. So 3 is the consequent of 1, so we're done. So, okay, if you had trouble with this, why might you have had trouble? Well, the main thing is probably it may not have occurred to you to say show Q. You always want to show, unless you know you don't need to, unless you see, oh, here's how I'm going to complete this derivation. If you're trying to show a conditional, then you want to do a subderivation of the conditional's consequent, because once you're done with the conditional's consequent, you're, once you've completed that subderivation, you're done with the derivation. And once you enter the show line, then you can make the assumption. And so what do you have? You have a subderivation that on the one hand, if you complete it, you're done. And on the other hand, it gives you a new line because it gives you the assumption. So you always want to say show consequent because it's a con subderivation that when you're done with it, you're done with the whole thing. And if you and it lets you and it gives you an assumption, and so it makes it easier. You're now in a, a easier situation uh, to get a contradiction, right? With two and the premise, you can't get to a contradiction. With two, the premise in line four, you can get to a contradiction. Once you get that contradiction, you complete the subderivation, and because it's a wisely chosen subderivation, once you complete it, you finish the whole thing. Now, it's not necessary strictly to. Um, do show consequent, you could say, I want to I want to do modus ponens with line 1, so I want to show its antecedent. This is a negation, so you assume, um, oh, actually, this doesn't work very well. Yeah, no. Okay, so not only sometimes do you uh, want to do show consequent, sometimes you need to do show consequent. So, I hope that illustrates the, that strategy, and that's the first part of the setup strategy, which uh, sort of discussed in stages in the videos for Unit 5, but has also been discussed in the strategy documents and videos for Unit 4. Okay, so that's uh, derivation 1009.